Ban in a Box 2020 for Windows is here. We've been busy and added over 50 new features and an amazing collection of new content, including 202 new reel tracks, new MIDI super tracks, instrumental studies, reel drums transcriptions, extra styles pack 8, and more. We also have bonus packs with 40 reel tracks in addition to the 202 new reel tracks, so in total an amazing 242 new reel tracks are available. In addition, there are over 250 new reel styles that use the new reel tracks, including Great Americana, Gospel Vocals, here using the new Band in a Box feature, Reel Tracks Thickening, New Blues with Johnny Highland and Saul Philcox, British and Hazy 60s Guitars, Modern Funk, Island Grooves with Reel Tracks Firsts, Steel Drum and Marimba. There are over 50 new features in Band in a Box 2020. There's the Reel Tracks Thickening feature, which gives you smoother sounding ensemble type reel tracks such as vocals, horn sections, and strings. There is the Find a Sub feature for reel tracks, which lets you swap out reel tracks for similar but different ones, so you can find exactly the right reel track for your song. Multi riffs, which were introduced into the DAW plugin last year, are now available in Band in a Box, allowing you to generate a bunch of different performances from a single reel track and you can then pick the one that suits your song best. Most reel drums now have reel charts with accurate drum notation. There's a new Reel Tracks Artist Browser to find info and lists of reel tracks on all the artists. A new Feature Browser allows the new or forgetful user to easily find and use most features, hotkeys, and docs from a single window. There's the new Audio Chord Wizard multi-window display, and Equalize Tempo which allows changing a song that wasn't recorded to a click track to a fixed constant tempo. Enhanced audio time pitching stretching has been added and an improved 64-bit VST synth font 64 has also been included. There are song picker enhancements, bass and drums or drums only auto intros, 3,400 titles have been added to the song titles browser, left-handed and student view guitar, drag and drop enhancements. There are also 30 enhancements to the Band in a Box DAW plugin. The DAW plugin is included with any purchase of Band in a Box and allows you to use many of the great features of Band in a Box right in your favorite DAW, such as Cakewalk, Reaper, Pro Tools, PreSonus, and many more. There are audio harmonies which can be applied to any DAW audio track with one to four voices created using intelligent Band in a Box harmonies with passing tones. Other new features allow customizing tracks, new bar and song settings options, and other enhancements. We'll check out these new features for both the main program and the DAW plugin later on in the video. But first, let's check out some of the excellent new reel tracks and reel drums in Band in a Box 2020. Right now, we're listening to our exciting new gospel vocals. With these vocals, we have a three part, six voice choir with an improvised gospel part singing over the whole thing. And the thickening feature in Band in a Box makes these and all of our previously released vocal reel tracks sound much smoother and fuller. If we look in the reel tracks picker, we can see that these vocals are on this track, but it's also using the medley feature. The medley feature has been in Band in a Box for quite some time and has many possible uses, but in this case, it's utilizing a new feature to thicken the vocal part by playing the same reel track multiple times simultaneously but with features that ensure that each one is actually playing different material. And the dB offsets have been entered to bring the entire thing down in volume, since there's so much added material here. And panning is used to spread the parts over the left-right spectrum, adding to the fullness of the sound. We can see this last track is actually different, so that's not part of the thickening feature, but is something the medley feature has been able to do in the past, play an additional different reel track on the same track. In this case, this is a separate vocal part that's meant to complement the choir with cool ad-lib embellishments throughout. If you're new to Band in a Box, I'll give you a brief introduction. Band in a Box is an auto accompaniment program that allows you to type in any chord progression in any key, and it generates backing tracks for you. This is an amazing tool for practice, songwriting, composing, teaching, and music production. And that's what you're hearing right now. Everything you're hearing here, including these amazing vocals, was created simply by typing in these chords, picking this style, setting the tempo, and pressing play. 
Band in a Box then did everything, and you can enter any chord progression in any key. I'll highlight this by making a couple changes to this chord chart. I'll completely change the chords in the first eight bars. I'll go D, C, which is the flat seven chord in the key of D, then G, I'll do that again, then E minor, A, E minor, A, D. And then I'll change the key of the whole thing down a whole tone to C. And now you can see that it's playing over our new progression in a completely different key, and it still sounds fabulous. Let's have a look at some of the other amazing new content in Band in a Box. The Jazz Blues Funk and Latin Collection this year features a vast assortment of new reel tracks, with more amazing funk and fusion styles from legendary favorites Alex Acuna, Jeff Lorber, Sput Searite, and more. We have new Latin American island grooves. Soca and merengue. On the blues front, there are new reel tracks from Johnny Highland and Saul Philcox. And a special treat for jazz students or any musician who wants to improve their jazz chops, we have two special sets of reel tracks which were specifically designed to work great over rhythm changes and jazz blues respectively. We also have sophisticated new bossa horn section styles with options for a simple elegant trio or this melodic lounge style. We also have some amazing new pop rock and world styles. We've added requested classic rock guitar styles, including blues infused classic rock, hazy 60s hard rock, psychedelic 70s and 80s guitar styles. We have new cinematic metal guitar, including low-tuned metal guitars. We've added requested ska styles. There are new singer-songwriter styles. And we have some down and dirty blues inspired baritone guitar from Real Track's favorite Brent Mason. For country Americana and Celtic, we've added two sets of country pole winner Real Tracks, featuring musicians who have been awarded some of the most prestigious awards in the industry, such as the Academy of Country Music Awards. And we have new country soloist reel tracks from Nashville great Johnny Highland. And we have another reel tracks first, Jaw Harp, which works great with both our existing Celtic styles as well as our bluegrass styles. 
and we have several sets of old-time Americana reel tracks. So now let's get into the new features of the program itself. To start with, let's look at a feature designed to help us explore all the features in Vandenbox. This is the new Feature Browser. There are two ways to enter the Feature Browser. You can press the question mark button, which is here in the maximized view, or here in the new miscellaneous tab in compact view. Or you can just type as if you were entering a chord, forward slash, enter. So first, let's explore the different elements of this dialog. There's a text filter where you can type keywords, and there's a list of topics here. If I type chord in the filter, it's narrowed down the topic list to show any topics that have to do with chords, which is a lot. I can continue to type and make it chord builder. And we can see it's narrowed it to one topic, enter chords with chord builder. We can now see there's a memo describing the feature, a manual button that links to the entry for this feature in the online manual, a video button which is visible if there is an online tutorial that describes the feature. Over 80 topics in the Feature Browser do have videos. There's a graphic showing the feature, a Do It button that will actually launch the feature if applicable. And then here it shows you the image of the button that launches the feature and shows you all the different ways you can launch the feature, which is a great way to learn about features and learn hotkeys. So in this case, it's in the toolbar under the Tools tab, right here. It's also got a hotkey, Control shift b It's available in two locations in the main menu, Edit Chord Builder and the Window menu, Chord Builder. And it can also be accessed with the right-click menu on the main chord sheet. For myself, I've now learned a new hotkey, Control shift b So this dialog has several uses. As we just saw, if you know about a feature, in this case the chord builder, but you don't know how to find it, it shows you hotkeys as well as all the other ways to access the feature. Another way to use it is to find a bunch of topics relating to a keyword. For example, if you are a guitar player, type the word guitar and you'll see what's available. Another way to use it is as a one-stop shopping location, because you can launch the features from here as well. Or you can use it if you're learning the program and would just like to browse or watch videos about topics you're interested in. A handy tip is that if you filter by video, it shows you all of the topics that do have videos available. Another new feature we've introduced is the Find Best Sub for Real Tracks feature. I'm going to demonstrate this new feature on the demo song file for one of our new Rhythm Changes Real Tracks styles. We've added Real Tracks, both rhythm comping ones as well as soloists, that were designed specifically to work very well over rhythm changes, and that's what we're listening to right now. In this case, a jazz quartet with bass, piano, drums, and a guitar soloing over rhythm changes. For those who aren't familiar with the term, rhythm changes is one of the most common progressions in jazz music, and it's used as the basis for literally hundreds of jazz tunes. And it's commonly considered one of the most important progressions for jazz musicians to be able to play over. The only progression that would rival it in importance would be 12-bar blues progressions, and we have another set of real tracks that focuses primarily on jazz blues. Now here, the bass and the piano and the guitar soloist are all part of this new set, and you can see that in the names of the real tracks themselves. But we also have lots of other jazz swing real tracks that we've made over the years. Even though these ones were made specifically with rhythm changes in mind, those other older real tracks would likely also be great on this song. So I'm going to right click on the bass track in the mixer and select Find Best Sub. And now in this dialog is a whole list of possible real tracks I can swap in, but with the best possible matches close to the top. We can see there are some jazz swing bass real tracks that we've made with some wonderful musicians. 
Neil Swainson, with whom we've made a number of different variations of jazz swing, the very talented Jody Prosnick, and the legendary Ron Carter. So I'd like to swap that real track in here. So now we have a bass reel track that we made with Ron Carter. So that was fun, maybe now I'll try the same with the soloist. If I use the same feature on the guitar track, we can see right near the top is a suggestion for guitarist Mike Marino. So I'll try that out. still medium jazz swing guitar soloing, it's definitely distinctly different. So this is a great way to explore different approaches to similar musical styles and genres. The feature can even be used if you don't already have a real track on a particular track. Here I have one of our new singer-songwriter styles loaded, Bay Wind Banjo Folk Swing Waltz. So I'd like to add a new real track to the mix here. So maybe I'll add a new one to the soloist track. Now there are choices here. Select best all real tracks or chording or soloist. I haven't quite decided what I want to add yet, so I'll select all. Now that I'm in here though, I think I probably don't need another chording real track. This is another new feature in this dialog that you can change the type after you've already gone into one of these Best Real Tracks dialogues without it having to close and reopen. So I'll remove background cording. Another new feature is three new filter options. Instrument, for example, acoustic guitar. Instrument family, for example, any guitar. Or custom instrument range. I think maybe I want some kind of guitar. So I'll pick instrument family and here pick guitar. So this one near the top might be good. So I'll double click on it to sample it. And yeah, I like that. That might be perfect. And it was made with one of my favorite musicians, guitarist Brent Mason. But now maybe I'd like to see other options that are similar to that option. Now that I've picked that, I can use that same list best subs feature, but applied to this new real track. And actually, now that I see the list update, I'm thinking a resonator guitar would actually be perfect. I'll sample some. And this one sounds like it has delay effects on it, which might be cool. It looks like it was done with musician Eddie Dunlap. Before I check that one out, I'd like to maybe learn a little more about Eddie, so I'll press Artist Bios. And here's a great little bio for Eddie. This is the new Artist Browser. This is also available from the main Real Tracks picker, which you can access by clicking on the bio display of whatever Real Track you have selected. It opens to the Real Tracks artist you initially selected, but once in it, you have access to all the Real Tracks artists. You can filter to find certain artists or instruments. There's also a More Info button that takes you to our website page highlighting that artist. And if I wanted to filter to show only Real Tracks by that artist, I could press this button. But I'll just close this window without applying the filter. And I'll check out that real track that we found with these helpful new features. Earlier on in the video, we had a brief look at the thickening feature. And we're now going to take a more detailed look at it. The thickening feature is an enhancement to the medley feature in Box. The medley feature allows you to put multiple reel tracks onto the same Band in a Box track, either playing them separately, like soloists who take turns, or together to form an ensemble on that track. 
The thickening feature is an extension of the method of having multiple reel tracks play simultaneously, but the thickening feature now allows you to select multiple instances of the same reel track, but will ensure that they're playing different parts, in effect thickening up the sound. This is analogous to the wall of sound technique used by many music producers, where many layers of various instruments, often the same instrument, are overdubbed on a recording to get a very dense overall sound. Now, there are a few ways you as a user can use this feature. First, you can pick a style that uses the feature. Secondly, you can pick a reel track from the reel tracks picker that has the feature applied to it. And finally, you can add it yourself to any reel track you like. The first use, picking a style that uses the feature, has been done here. This glory style has the thickening feature applied to the choir vocal track. Demos for some other styles that use this feature can be found in your BB folder where Band in the Box is installed under Documentation, Tutorials, Tutorial BB 2020. Incidentally, I'm using a new feature that allows you to drag files from Windows Explorer into Band in a Box to open them. So here is one example with thickened horns. Here is another with vocal ooze thickened. And here is another with vocal ums thickened. The second way to use the thickening feature is to pick entries in the reel tracks picker that have been specially made to use this feature. I'm currently listening to one of our new singer-songwriter styles, low plain classic country folk. So now I'm going to go into the reel tracks picker and add a reel track to a currently blank track, the melody track. I'll use the new filter we saw earlier, instrument family, and I'll select voices. And this one here is a dedicated reel track that has vocal oohs and ahs using the thickening feature. And finally, I'm gonna show you how you can add the feature yourself to any track. I've got a demo loaded, Tumble Slow 16th Alt Country, which contains a string quartet reel track. I'm going to show you how you can thicken this string quartet. I'll enter the reel tracks picker and select that string quartet track. I'll press the medley button and then select play all simultaneously. Then I'll press the duplicate button and use the default four. We can see now the same reel track is taking up five slots. Because there will now be so much more audio mixed together, it would be good to reduce the volume of the individual slots, say negative eight for each one. This is just a guess, and of course when we use it in Band in a Box, we can also adjust the volume there to fine tune it. So it's not important for me to get it exactly right here. For panning, it would be nice to spread out the five different tracks over the left-right spectrum to get a nice full sound. Before I leave this dialogue, I think maybe I'll try thickening the acoustic guitar as well. Maybe I'll just add two for a total of three. And now we have a much nicer, full-sounding string section. And we have this thickened guitar as well. With 
Bat in a Box 2020, there's a new Audio Cord Wizard multi-window display and a new equalized tempo, which allows changing a song that wasn't recorded to a click track to a fixed, constant tempo. The Audio Chord Wizard automatically figures out the chords from any audio file, WAV, WMA, MP3, M4A, and more. You just open the audio file in Banana Box, set the bar lines within the file so that it lines up to the bars in Banana Box, and then the program does the rest. I'm going to show you this by opening an audio file in Banana Box, a recording of the old American folk song, O Shenandoah, done in a pop rock style. If you want to try this yourself, you can find that audio file in your main BB folder in Documentation, Tutorials, Tutorial BB 2018. It's in that folder because that was the version where the built-in audio cord wizard was first introduced. The new feature we saw in the last segment showed dragging a Band in a Box file into Band in a Box to open it. Well, you can do that with other files too, like audio or MIDI. It then gives me the option to import it into the current song, or open it as a new song, which I'll do. I'll then press the ACW button to open the Audio Chord Wizard, which displays the audio in this new Audio Chord Wizard multi-window display. So now to get the feature to work, the program needs some input, specifically the bar lines. So I'll play a little bit. So I can see here is where bar one starts. So I'll add a bar line there. Now you can add bar lines by pressing that button, or you can also add bar lines by playing the song and typing L at the bar lines. So I'll do that for a little bit of the song. So now that we've entered some bar lines, the program is able to tell that the tempo that it starts at is 82 beats per minute. So it's now moved the starting point to bar 1 by setting the overall tempo to that. This is a new feature that's been added that saves you the trouble of making those changes yourself. But it looks like I accidentally put the second bar line a bit late, which makes it think that the first bar line was slower than it in fact was. No problem, I can just fix that. And now the tempo of the song has again readjusted to match the first bar. I could fine tune the other bars too if I wanted. Another new feature is that the tempo of each bar is now displayed right in the waveform window. This is very useful information, and previously if you wanted to know this info you had to right click on the bar line handles. And now that I've entered just a few bar lines I can turn on auto marking which extrapolates the rest of the bars. So the purple lines are the ones set by me, and the turquoise lines are the ones the program figured out on its own. Now this song was not recorded to a click track, so it gradually speeds up throughout the course of the song. If I go through and look at these automated bar lines, I can see that they eventually drift off with the bar lines coming after the wave peaks that, in this case, show where the actual downbeat of the bar occurs. So I can move some of them, but the great thing is, if I just do it sporadically throughout the file, it adjusts all the ones in between. Now that that's finished, I can see that it gradually speeds up from 85 beats per minute at the beginning to 88 beats per minute by the end. Now that that's all done, of course, I can press the Analyze button. And with this split screen, I don't even need to close the audio edit window, I can now see the chords. And now that that's all done, I'll show you another new feature, the Equalize Tempo feature. As I pointed out, this song starts at 85 beats per minute and gradually speeds up so that it's 88 by the end. This feature will equalize it so that it's exactly the same throughout. All I have to do now that I've done this work on the file is press Equalize. It's suggested a tempo of 85 since that's the starting tempo, but maybe I'll split the difference between the beginning and the end and I'll pick 86. It takes a few moments, 
And now the entire thing is 86 beats per minute. One final thing I'll show you is how you can, during the analyze part of the process, send the MIDI to the soloist track. I'll turn that checkbox on and reanalyze. Now if I open the notation window or the piano roll window, I can get a glimpse of what's going on behind the scenes with the audio chord wizard. Note that this is a snapshot view every eighth note of the pitches present, not an attempt at polyphonic transcription. This should be viewed purely for analysis purposes. The song picker now builds faster for large song lists over 30,000 and up to 60,000 songs. And the song button now has three additional menu items to launch the song picker. Open song picker in current folder. This opens the song picker in the current folder of the last loaded song. Open song picker in home folder. This opens the song picker in the home folder, which by default is CBB My Songs, but can be set by the user in the song picker. The home folder is a folder that remains constant, though you can change which folder you want that to be, whereas the current folder may be constantly changing. Open Song Picker in Favorite Folder. This launches the Favorite Folder dialog, which allows you to choose any previously used folder where a song was loaded from. And then open the Song Picker in that folder. And at the bottom of this menu is the same menu duplicated, but selecting it from here also has the effect of setting that as the default option when you press the left part of the button. So for example, right now there is a check beside Open Song Picker in Home Folder. But if I select Open Song Picker in Current Folder here, now if I go back to that menu, we can see there's now a check mark beside Open in Current Folder. So now if I press the left part of that button, that's what it does. So my home is set to the default, CBB Songs. But because the last file I opened was an instrumental study from Instrumental Studies Set 9, that's where it's currently loaded. There are also some enhancements to the chord search feature. There are three new checkboxes. Key must match exactly, chord extension must match exactly, and time signature must match. So to highlight this, I'm going to enter a progression. C sharp diminished, and C minor, just within a single bar. But I only want results to come up if that minor chord is the four minor chord. So I'm gonna set the key to G. Now this has been possible to do previously, but it would yield results if, for example, it was a C minor seven instead of a triad, or C minor nine, etc. I only want it to yield results if the first chord is a diminished chord and the second chord is just a minor triad. So I'll select chord extension must match exactly. I also only want four four songs to be displayed. So I'll also say time signature must match. So now it's yielded four results. Here it's B flat diminished to A minor in the key of E. So that A minor is the four minor chord. So that's correct. Same here. And here. And this was the actual progression I entered. If I go back in there and select the new option, key must match exactly, and now it's only yielded that one result because that was the only result where the chords actually were exactly as I entered them. And here is the instrumental study that I found with that feature. I'm going to use another instrumental study, Rhythm Changes Jazz Guitar Soloing, to highlight another excellent new feature, Left-Handed and Student View Guitar Window. 
Here is the standard view for the guitar window that's been a part of Band in a Box for many years. This is the view that a right-handed guitarist would get if they were holding their guitar and then flipped it upside down and held it out in front of them. It's then upside down with the low E on the bottom, then the A string, the next up, and so on and so on. Described like that, it may sound a little weird, but watching the notes display here, I think many guitar players would agree it's pretty intuitive what's going on. However, for someone playing a left-handed guitar, that wouldn't be intuitive at all. So there's a new option for left-handed view in the guitar settings. And so this now is the same view, but of a left-handed guitar. So another possible view is if you were watching a teacher play and they were sitting in front of you. And that is student view. So we've seen three different views so far, and there's actually a fourth. If you were a student watching a teacher, and your teacher was left-handed, this is the view you'd get. Interestingly, this left-handed student view is also the view a right-handed guitarist would get if they were watching themselves in a mirror. And the right-handed student view is also the view a left-handed person would get if they were watching themselves in a mirror. So to sum it up, there are four possible guitar views with these new features. Another cool new feature is the option to have drum-only or bass and drum-only intros automatically added to your song. Right now I have one of our Country Poll Winner demo songs loaded. These new real track sets feature some of Nashville's top musicians. With this one it has guitarist Danny Rader, the 2017 ACM Guitarist of the Year winner, bassist Jimmy Carter, who has played with country superstars such as Tim McGraw, Alan Jackson, and more, and drummer Miles McPherson, the 2017 ACM Drummer of the Year winner. Now I'll go into the feature browser that we saw earlier, and I'll type intro. Here's the entry for the intro feature, which has been part of Band in a Box for many years, but here is another entry for the new feature, which shows the drum only and bass and drum only options. Here are the different ways you can access it, and from this window you can also just select do it. I'd like pop chords, four bars is good, the key is automatically set to our song key, and I'd like bass and drums only. So now it's entered a pop progression as a four bar intro, but each chord has a dot beside it, which is the band in a box code for rest, but with B and D after the dot, meaning bass and drums are exempt from the rest, so they'll play. And now I'll try the same thing, but with drums only. There are also a lot of requested features that users have asked for that have been added to Band in a Box 2020. As we saw earlier, you can drag an audio file into Band in a Box, either to import it into the current song or to open it in a new song. You can also drag audio right into the audio window, and you're able to place it in different locations in time within the song. You can also import other types of files and into a variety of windows. For example, you can drag in a Band in a Box song file, such as an SGU or MGU, into the chord chart to open it. And MIDI works the same as audio, giving you the option to import into the current song 
or open it as a new song. Within Band in a Box, you can now drag from the mixer to the drop station, whereas previously you had to drag from the radio buttons near the top. And if you drag to the plus button, there are new options for selecting different bit depth, where previously it only used 16-bit, and different sample rates, where previously it only used 44.1K. These options are also available now in the main render dialog. Tracks that are customized, in other words, tracks that were set in the Real Tracks Picker or Real Drums Picker, etc., not in the style itself, are now indicated with an equal sign. So in this current song, it's now easy to tell at a glance that the bass, mandola, and guitar were all set in the style, but the drums and guitar too were set separately, indicated by the equal sign. And for customized tracks like that, the program will now ignore the settings in the style that might affect the sound, such as custom panning, reverb, double time, etc. The bar settings dialog can now change bars within the dialog. Previously, you had to exit the dialog to change settings for other bars, but now a new pull-down allows you to change bars without exiting the dialog. In addition, there's enhanced stretching and audio harmony. The latest version, 3.3.0 of Elastique and 1.04 of Harmony from zplane.de are included, making real tracks like these just sound better. And there is auto-updating for new content at boot up. When new content, such as styles, real tracks, or real drums have been added to Banana Box, it will detect this at boot up and display a message. If you respond yes, the style picker will open and rebuild the list of the styles, real tracks, and real drums. This is something that occurred previously in those separate dialogues, but only when you open those dialogues yourself. Now it gives you the option right at boot up, which means you can get that taken care of right away so it won't interrupt your workflow later on. In the Real Drums Quick List, the dialog is now sizable, with it remembering the size you set the next time you open the dialog. And the Artist Bio dialog we saw earlier is also available here, but in this case showing all Real Drums artists. That dialog is also available in the main Real Drums window just by clicking in the Bio area. The Song Titles browser has 3,400 more titles, including requests from users, so there are now 14,000 titles. There are notation enhancements. In previous versions, we added the N hotkey to quickly add notes. Well, now a new hotkey has been added, M as in Mary, allowing you to add additional notes. By default, it adds them a third above, but as you add each new one, you still have the ability to alter it with the up-down arrow keys. And you can use M to add as many notes as you like. And you can type R to add a rest. Another new feature checks the key signature when you save, and if it detects that the key signature may be wrong, it gives you a message with an option to change it. So clearly this song is in C, but I accidentally set the key signature to F. So when I save, it gives me this green message telling me the key may be wrong, which I can click on to automatically set it to C. The feature also lets you know right in the key signature button on the toolbar if it detects a possible wrong key signature. The section text and bar lyrics layer display on the lead sheet and printout when the fake sheet mode is on. There are music XML enhancements. Additional file types are supported, such as MXL, a compressed format, and music XML, in addition to the existing XML support. And when you load a music XML file, if the source track is drums, the track type of the destination track, melody or soloist, will be automatically set to drums. Hammer-ons, pull-offs and slides are also now saved to music XML. The eliminate note overlap feature has been improved. There's a new option to treat each channel as a separate track for purposes of eliminating note overlap. So in this file I have here, there are notes on the melody track but they're specifically guitar notes with different channels to place them on the different strings. 
with this note on the first string, or channel 11, this note on the second string, or channel 12, and then these two notes on the third string, or channel 13. With these, there is an overlap of these two notes on the same string, which I'd want to eliminate, but it's fine that these other notes on other strings are overlapping, so I wouldn't want to remove those. Here you can see me using the feature in Banana Box 2019, and you can see it's shortened all of the notes, not just the ones on channel 13, which I don't want. But with the new option to treat each channel as a separate track in Banana Box 2020, it does exactly what I want, only shortening the notes that overlap on the same string. Multi Riffs has also been added to Banner Box. Multi Riffs is a popular feature that has been available in Real Band and the Banner Box DAW plugin, and now it's available in Banner Box as well. This feature allows you to quickly generate seven variations of riffs from the same real track for either a portion of the song or the whole song. Once the tracks are generated, the seven files are saved as WAV files and can be accessed from the drop station where there will be a green indication of where the tracks can be dragged from. This is basically analogous to a producer recording a musician in a studio and having them record several passes of the same part of the song, so you could then pick and choose the best take or comp together different parts of multiple takes. I'll demonstrate right now with a soloist from this Outback demo song that's currently loaded. This style features country rock soloing by Nashville legend Johnny Highland. I'll just generate a four bar chunk of this, so I'll highlight bars nine to 12. So I'm gonna right click on the track with this soloist. You can also access this feature from the radio buttons above. I'll go to select real tracks and then to the part below where it has generate multi riffs. Currently add extra bar before and after the multi riff is selected. And that's actually good to leave enabled. Again, like in a studio situation, if you were recording a musician overdubbing over a region of a song, you'd give them a bar before the section they needed to play on, partly as a count-in, but also so they could play a pickup into it. That's basically what we're emulating here. So I'll select Generate Multi Riffs. The solos that was already on this track is now selected in this dialog. If we wanted to, we could here switch to a different real track, but for my purposes right now, I want the soloist real track that was already on that track. We press OK here to continue on to the next dialog. Now, because I had bars 9 to 12 highlighted beforehand, that is currently set in this dialog. Bar 9, 4 bars long. But if we wanted to, we could change to entire song or a different range of part of the song. But I'd like to keep those settings because I had deliberately picked those 4 bars before I started. It takes a few moments. It would take a longer amount of time if it were generating an entire song, but since I only selected four bars, it was actually pretty quick. They now show up as the same real track on seven different tracks. We can audition them in Pan in a Box by soloing them. We wouldn't want to listen to all of them together as that would be a bit of a cacophony. And we can now drag and drop them into any DAW, such as Pro Tools, Cubase, Cakewalk, or whatever DAW you use. For myself, I'm going to drag them into Reaper, where I can then do further editing. And that leads nicely into looking at the new features for the Ban in a Box DAW plugin. This is now version 2 of the DAW plugin, and there are over 30 enhancements. The DAW plugin is included with any purchase of Ban in a Box and allows you to use many of the great features of Ban in a Box right in your favorite DAW, such as Cakewalk, Reaper, Pro Tools, Resonus, and many more. First of all, if you're unfamiliar with the DAW plugin, I'll give you a brief overview. The DAW plugin has many of the features of the main Ban in a Box program, but can be used right inside your favorite DAW. In the same way as the main Band in a Box program, you simply type a chord progression. Incidentally, all the chord shortcuts you're used to in Band in a Box are now available here. For example, I'll type FJ, with the J being a shortcut for a major 7th chord. You then pick a style. Set the tempo 
and press Generate. The tracks can then be dragged into the DAW where you can then play them, edit and mix them, record your own additional tracks, anything you ordinarily do inside the DAW. There are some new things you'll notice right away if you're familiar with version 1 of the plugin. First, there are now stereo and mono indicators right on the track. The song I entered here has three choruses, and you'll notice that there are repeat signs on the chord chart indicating this, which were not present in version 1. You'll also notice some differences to the tracks. The plugin now supports up to 25 tracks. That's 8 style tracks, 1 audio track, 9 special tracks, and 7 multi-riff tracks. And they're arranged in a much more intuitive way, with a plus button added next to each track as a context menu to select, generate, and set track settings. And that includes changing reel tracks and reel drums for the style tracks, which could not be done previously. Whereas previously you had to view all of the available tracks as three separate pages, the tracks are now all available simply by scrolling through them, which is much more intuitive. You can now load any pre-recorded audio file to the audio track by using the plus menu or simply dragging the audio file over the audio track. For example, I have an alto sax recording that was played over this chord progression in a Windows Explorer folder, and I can bring it in by simply dragging it and dropping it on the audio track. Incidentally, I could also do the same with the master track, but right now I'll put it on the audio track. And with this new audio track, I can also, of course, now drag that into the DAW. And I'm going to use that track to demonstrate another very exciting new feature, audio harmonies. You can now apply audio harmonies to any track, whether it's generated tracks or audio tracks like this one that I dragged in. I'll click on the plus button and select Harmonize. I'll just do one voice above. I won't double the melody. The harmony is now put on one of the empty special tracks, so I can drag it in. And now I have this cool, harmonized, simple horn line playing with my song. Style tracks can also now be customized. For example, I could replace any of these tracks with other real tracks if I wanted, or this style has nothing assigned to the piano track, so maybe I'll see if I can find an organ to add to that. I'm going to open another Reaper file where I have a recording of the old folk song, O oh Shenandoah. Oh Shenandoah I see. This is a recording of just a guitar player strumming some simple chords with a singer singing the melody on one track and singing a harmony on the other track. I'm going to use the plugin to create some tracks to go along with this. I'll enter the chords. I'll pick this Sierra Mountain Folk Style and I'll generate the parts. So now we can see that the waveform icons have turned green, meaning they're ready. So earlier in the video I showed dragging them into the DAW, but you can also just have them play in sync right from the DAW. If I double click on the master, that enables syncing for all the tracks along with the tracks in the DAW. Or you can double click on the waveforms for the individual tracks to enable sync playing for each of them.
And then you can also right click to mute or unmute certain tracks. And then of course, if at any point you want to do further editing on these tracks, you can still drag them into the DAW in the usual manner. Many of the features that have been added to Band in a Box that we explored earlier in this video are also added to the plugin version. This includes the new filter options, the artist browser and various dialogues. Over 300 real drums have real charts with drum notation. You can drag and drop Band in a Box song files from Windows Explorer right into the plugin to open them. The thickening feature shown earlier in the video can be used in the plugin. And the plugin uses the latest version of Elastique and Harmony, which makes the real tracks and audio harmonies just sound better. There are many enhancements to the chord sheet. The plugin now supports visual transpose in the chord sheet, so for example, if you were a tenor sax player, you could have the chords transposed just for display purposes. You can now use Tab or Enter to move forward, or Shift-Tab, Shift-Enter to move back a bar in the chord sheet. The plugin now supports alternative chord displays such as Roman numeral, solfege, fixed do, and Nashville notation. The plugin will now highlight the bar corresponding to the position in the DAW. This can help a user quickly understand where in their song they are simply by looking at which bar is highlighted in the plugin. This setting can be turned off in the Preferences dialog. The chord sheet now supports shortcuts to insert or remove a bar in the chord sheet. All you have to do is type insert, enter, or remove, enter, and the chords are shifted left or right. Note that this only shifts the chords and does not actually add or remove bars to the chord sheet. Song tags can now be added by using the song settings dialog or simply typing in shortcuts. Tag jump, Tag start, tag end. There are also many requested features, such as the song settings dialog, the bar settings dialog, the style picker saves the size and position between sessions. If the tempo in your DAW is different from the tempo in the plugin, there will be a flashing indicator right by the plugin tempo. Clicking on that flashing indicator will then set the plugin tempo to the same tempo as the DAW. A spinning wheel has been added to the bottom left corner of the plugin to visually indicate if the plugin is in the middle of communication with the main Band in a Box app. This just gives you some feedback so you know when the program is working behind the scenes. And you can also select multiple tracks with shift or control and then control drag to drag just those selected tracks into the DAW. We hope you enjoy all the wonderful new real tracks and other content, the new features in version 2 of the Banana Box DAW plugin, and the amazing new features in Banana Box 2020. Thanks for watching and have fun!